What up guys, Alex here. Got the wide body behind me and today we're gonna to be doing an overview of the car to go into his technical specifications of what I did for the build. Uh, I tried making a video the other week and uh, while I did do a decent job, I think, in the shop here talking about the details of the car, on the test drive, it was so cold, I think it was like in the mid-30s, that the car just never actually got up to warm uh, operating temperature, and the tires just kept breaking loose. Uh, granted, I have a, a really bad choice of tires, I guess. Um, those are the Goodyear uh, F1 gsd 3s not the best uh, tire for a car making uh, about 1,100 horsepower. But we're going to do it again today. It's a little bit warmer. Uh, the thermometer... Uh, inside the shop says it's 77 degrees. It's a bit warmer in here than it is outside, but uh, I think outside is about mid low 70s. So it'll be a it'll be a good day to do a, go for a test drive and uh, show some boost poles and whatnot. So let's get to it. Let's go through the uh, the wide body as it is behind me and uh, give you guys a quick overview of the build. Here we go. All right. Well, here it is. This is my 1986 300ZX Z31. This is a uh, a BSR, they call it a Bob Sharp Racing. They abbreviate it as a BSR. I call it the wide body. Um, but as you can tell, it's got the Tribute coloring, the red, white, and blue. And uh, you can see all the graphics there. I had a hard time getting these graphics um, in a vector rendering format. Most of them, some of them you could find in vector rendering format, but there was some I had to reproduce, like that Canon T70. I had to find a decent, clear resolution picture of it and then convert it to a vector in format, so that way you could blow it up to any size you want um, for the vinyl printing. But overall it came out great. Uh, one thing you'll notice on top, it's my name. It's not a real Paul Newman car, it's, it's my car. So I think it's perfectly fine to put my name on it. Um, but everything I did as accurate as I possibly could to the real deal back in the day. Um, if you look at the, the rear glass here in the hatch, it's actually a, a racing polycarbonate racing glass. Um, did my best to make it look like the real deal as I did back in the 80s. I think it came out great. Spoiler came out great. There's a huge chunk missing in the corner of it that I had to do some fiberglassing to get it back to where it needs to be and it came out great. If you look there at the center tail light, that's a Kaminari center tail light piece. Those are really hard to find in, in good condition. However, in Yahoo Auction Japan, um, in Japan there's, you can find some of these that are NOS, new old stock. So I was able to actually find one there. It's about 1500 bucks to have it shipped. And uh, it's just one of those things that just adds very nice depth of detail making sure it's accurate and as pristine as possible but yeah the graphics came out great it looks all around original as best as it could be um, if you look at the wheels here these are genuine bbs e50 wheels um, i had contacted bbs about the project of the car and they said that the car needed these wheels and and it took about eight months to get these wheels um, the barrels they had in stock in the U.S., but the center pieces, which are, you know, that gold piece, which is magnesium, they had to be special made in, J in um, not Japan, I'm sorry, in Germany. So it took about, like I said, about eight months to get them, uh, but it came out great. Uh, the offset looks really good. Uh, the rears are a uh, 17 by 12 inch rear. Um, and the, the tire size is a, is a, let's see, a 315, 35, 17. And the fronts, which are a 17 by 10, those are a, a 275 40 17. So I think the staggered and the stance looks 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 right to me. I think it all came out really well, really great. But let's go ahead and move inside the car and check it out. So if you look in here, we'll start with the uh, seats. That's the uh, kind of the first thing your eyes get fixated on. So these are Kirky seats. These are actually the same model seats that they had back in the day. You can still buy them. They're, they are period correct. And then I made uh, my own version of a roll cage uh, headrest there, uh, wrapped it in, in perforated leather. So it looks looks period correct again. Let's move on to the steering wheel. That is a Momo Monte Carlo uh, quick release steering wheel. Again, it looks like the uh, period correct version that would have been on the car. I'm not sure what was on the car initially. It could have been a, uh, a Nismo, it could have been a a, uh, Sparco it was they use different ones back in those times But if you look at the gauges here and I've got the ignition on to show you that the power is lit uh, These are a Marshall branded gauge now these get really good reviews They're a direct competitor of Autometer and what I like about them is how easy they are to take apart and modify So I modify them only cosmetically to put the Nissan uh, Lettering behind it to make it look like it's an actual Nissan gauge set so in my opinion, it came out great. 
we'll just go in here and check it out. All right, so let me uh, get a little closer in here and show you other things that go on. So let's talk more about the steering wheel. As I, as I mentioned before, it's a Momo steering wheel, but it's on a S13 uh, NRG quick release um, hub there for the steering wheel. And what I did, like they have a short version, a stubby version, and getting that makes the, the offset, the depth from like your headlights, for example, almost a factory feel. So it, normally when you have a quick release, the steering wheel is like so far forward into your chest. Now, if you like that, that's great. I, I kind of wanted a normal depth of, of grip there for the steering wheel, and I think it came out, you know, really good. So, and if you look down here, if you can see, yeah, you can see right about there. This is a, the steering column here is a blend of a Nissan Versa. So while I don't have your traditional hydraulic uh, power steering, I have a electric assist from a Nissan Versa. So it's great having power steering in a car that's basically a race car without the all the fancy, you know, power steering hydraulics and whatnot. So works out pretty well. My only complaint at high speeds, uh, because there's no canvas input, and I, I can with Megascore, as you can see over there, we'll talk about that in a minute. But with, with Megascore, I can provide that input into the canvas to simulate the, the speed. So it would actually uh, kind of tighten the feedback. Otherwise, right now, it's, it's always kind of on the, the, I guess, the least sensitivity, which means the easiest turning. So at high speeds, it kind of feels a little bit loose, but you get used to it. I may or may not do anything about it, but I, I like it how it is now. So we'll see. Um, but moving down the line here. As we can see, these are all Marshall gauges like I just talked about. The the Y-band are these older A AEM uh, Y-band gauges that look very old and, and period correct. And I think it matches the Marshall gauges pretty well. And these, these gauges, I'm sorry, these switches here are my best uh, attempt of making a period correct switch set. As far as having the, the labeling below and the on off, I actually found a picture and the, and the, the labeling there, like the on off, looks exactly the same as it did in the 80s. And if you look above, there's a little plaque there in, in love and memory of Alex Miller Jr. That's my son. Um, unfortunately, about you know, 10 years ago, I, uh, I lost my son in a, in a tragic accident. And, uh, it, you know, it is what it is, but this car was um, built and, it, you know, it, to him in love and memory you know, as a dedication. But it kept my mind busy and, you know, I do this in, in, the, in the love of having him as a memory. So this is dedicated towards him. So, yeah. Moving down the line here, uh, the shifter there is a it's it's going to a Tremec Magnum. Uh, the first gear set's 2.66. This is a, the Tremec Magnum F um, F for the uh, F body uh, fitment. They did, it's a fairly new version of the of the Tremec Magnum series. Um, now let's not get too technical here. Some people ask me why don't I do like the 350Z CD009 and guys not to just cause a debate but that transmission is not capable of holding any any sort of high power for very long um, there's a floating nickname of that transmission called the CDO wine and what that means is that the either the bearings of the synchros give out when the uh, transmissions seeing a lot of high horsepower um, so and additionally the gearing of the CD009 is just awful you know it has it, it's uh it's matching gear the one-to-one -one is in the fifth gear right normally like on a like a z32 or z31 the matching ratio the one-to-one -one is at the fourth gear right so essentially what i'm getting at is you have to row an extra gear in the uh, 350z transmission to accomplish the high speed or or the the overdrive and the overdrive is any gear past the one-to-one -one ratio so in this tremec magnum there's actually two overdrive gears so fifth and six is past the the one-to-one -one. so Again, the one-to-one -one in this car is, is fourth. Uh, so it's a double overdrive, six-speed manual transmission. And uh, made it to that transmission is a custom bell housing I made. It was a quick time bell housing made it for an LS. And I uh, essentially welded a flange to it. And yes, I dialed it in with a uh, micrometer and make sure everything was uh, was perfect. And uh, and the clutch is an Exidy Hyper Series Builder uh, clutch, which is a triple disc clutch, non-sprung hub, uh, and it's a um, ceramic uh, faced clutch disc and so it's like an on off switch you get used to it after a while but even when you jump in the car for the first time it's like it's a leg out <laughs> leg workout and you just it's you get to get used to it so when we go for a drive you'll see that like initially I'll I'll have like an adjustment period of getting warmed up to it but it's not terrible once you get used to it 
And as I mentioned earlier, this car has a, it's running on Mega Squirt as far as a standalone. That's a, that's the Mega Squirt 3 Gold Box. Uh, I got the hookup from Felix over at um, Hamilton. He's he's great at, at providing the tuning services and solutions. So very special shout out to Felix. Thanks, Felix. So let's go ahead and move to the back and show what's back there. Not much to talk about, but let's go through it. All right, so first things first, it does have meth injection uh, via AEM as well. And that's just a huge five gallon tank. I, I generally just have it half filled. There's no reason to keep it full. Um, the battery on the left there is a Odyssey Extreme battery. These are very heavy batteries, but they are great at providing high uh, cranking amps and they're, uh, they're an AGM uh, cell battery. So uh, it's just one of those things that you just have to spend the money up front to get a good battery. And then on the other side, I have a distribution block relay set up here and everything's labeled to the, to the what they need to be. So um, since we're looking at the, the relays here, as you can see, I have three relays dedicated to fuel pumps. So I have three fuel pumps in here. Initially, the car had two external MagnaFuel MP4303 pumps and I had nothing but problems with those pumps. I was chasing down problems, called the manufacturer, they recommended XYZ, did everything they had suggested and yet I was still having what I thought was uh, heat cavitation. So dropped all those pumps off, opened up the fuel cell and added three Walboro fuel pumps and the Walboros are the 525 Hellcats. So what I did is on the primary fuel pump setup, I call it fuel pump one, it's two 525 Hellcats merged into one and then that's the primary. The secondary fuel pump, which is actually number three, kicks on at a certain boost threshold at an RPM threshold. So basically when the, and also at a fuel pressure, so when Megasquirt senses a certain combination of boost and fuel pressure droppage, it'll kick on the third pump just to provide an extra bump in fuel pressure and supply. So I've only seen it happen, I think, once or twice in the, in the data logs, but that was when I was on dyno runs trying to make high horsepower. So normally when I'm driving a car, I, I bet I will never see that third pump kick on. But here it is. Um, this is a aluminum uh, anodized fuel door, I think it's off of a Jeep, and it, man, it fits well, right? I mean, it's just an easy access to put fuel in the car right there. And these are the electrical bulkheads for the, the Walboro pumps. But overall, it's pretty good. It works out well, and it stays closed and keeps all the, you know, every all the fuel, most of the fuel smell out of the car. So, but that's it for the rear. Um, let's uh, talk about the, the differential setup real quick before I move to the engine bay. So the car has a, Subframe swapped that to a S14 240SX subframe, and it has the Nismo GT Pro from a 350Z with a 3.54 final drive uh, ratio. Um, the Nismo GT Pro has 20 clutches, 10 on each side of the carrier, and it's the it's the strongest, best built diff for the uh, 350Z or any R200 for that matter. Um, so when you're driving, it, it sounds like grenades or hammers are going off in the rear, and that's just what it sounds like for a highly built diff. It's loud, obnoxious, but I know that it's going to hold the power. It's not going to slip, and I don't think that the axle stubs are going to break. And from the axle stubs, continues on to the Z32 Q45 axle combination. Those are 31 spline uh, axles, and they're just beef. They're beefy. They're robust. They're the strongest axle combination that Nissan made. Even the like the 350Z is only 29. Um, splines but the 370 is also 31 but the axle them, the axle shafts themselves are a bit thinner um, so the twin turbo the z32 twin turbo and the q45 axles are to date the, the strongest axles that nissan made i haven't really uh, looked into the gtr like the r35 axles they look strong i haven't had ones in my hands to measure and see if they're compatible for the setup that i'm assuming they might be as strong but we'll find out that later on once i you know get my hands on a set but anyway, let's uh, let's pop the hood and give a rundown of the motor setup. Um, I have to get the video uh, cut off here for a moment as I have to under the hood pins and get the hood prop out. So give me a moment, and I'll get that done. All right, got the uh, hood hood up with the hood prop, and uh, let's just go through the engine bay and talk through it. So first things first, that's a Nissan VK56 from a 2006 Titan. It's fully forged built, forged pistons, forged rods. The, the pistons are CP pistons coated, um, and the, the rods are Brian Crower rods with ARP 2000 uh, uh, rod bolts there. Uh, the block has ARP hardware, 
mains, studs, even the flywheel bolts are ARP. So the, the whole block's fully built. Got Schneider racing cams, Schneider valve springs in there. And you know, I did what I could to get this motor breathing as best I could with what was available. The, the, the fuel rods there, I'm sorry, the fuel rails are custom made fuel rails, billet, um, made it to, got dash eight lines. The fuel injectors are the Bosch 210s. Um, those are 2200 CC injectors. Uh, very, very large injectors. Um, in my opinion, when you're building an engine, anything, you, you wanna have as much fuel capability as possible and not reach that 100% duty cycle, even 90%, even in my opinion, 80%. You wanna have plenty of overhead for fuel for the what if scenario. So yes, 2200 CC injectors are huge. Um, probably don't even need anywhere near that size, but the price, they're, they're really competitively priced injectors. So, so the turbos there, these are Precision's 6466s, and they're the CEA billet dual ball bearing turbos with the symmetrical housing. Um, I will admit this turbo, when we put it in the car, it was a little more centered than I would like to. So what I, you know, at some point I'm gonna cut off the V bands and reshape it to move the turbo a little bit more to the headlight bucket area. As you can see, this one is, and it looks, it looks good there, but full transparency. There's no performance issues at all. Like, yes, it's super close, but there's plenty of opportunity for air to flow in there. Um, so, you know, it works out well. Uh, going down from the turbos, these are precision 50 millimeter wastegates. Um, all V bands, everything's V bands. Even, even the intercooler pipings, which we'll quickly talk down here. The uh, intercooler piping has the the also the precision 50 millimeter wastegates there. And since we're down here, I have massive 30 row uh, oil coolers. One from the one for the oil cooler, the transmission, and one for the oil, the engine itself. And then, as we are down here, those are. Uh, side intercoolers from Z1. These are the, what they call the, B, the BA intercoolers, the big ass intercoolers. They are a uh, four inch core with two and a half inch piping. Um, they fit really well. I like the way that they're taking advantage of the huge mouth of the wide body. And uh, I think they do the job as the data logging for Mega Squirt shows that the uh, intake temperatures are really cold. So they're doing their job. Um, the intake that you see there, the huge, you know, big ass intake there, that's from a VK45 intake. And, and why I chose that over like a sheet box, sheet metal box intake is that this has internal uh, uh, variable valve runners for that switches between long runners and short runners. So what it does at, a, at when you're driving at a low RPM range, um, it has long runners, which helps produce torque and in a turbo scenario that helps build turbo boost, right? Because torque is what builds boost, right? It helps, that's what helps create the exhaust flow. And for high efficiency, like high power band, it'll then switch over to short runner. And it does that through a combination of RPMs uh, signal, which we did on the dyno. We determined what was the best RPM range for, the, for it to switch over, but it does it via vacuum pressure. So behind the intake, you see this solenoid right there, solenoid valve with these vacuum lines do a little canister there that holds the vacuum and it works out really well. We did see a positive increase in power switching from long to short. So it's just one of those added little nice touches. Throttle body is an LS102 millimeter throttle body, just an eBay find and it works out great. And uh, I was able to actually use the stock um, Z31 throttle cable there, just made a bracket to bolt behind the throttle body. It works out great. Like I said earlier, I have AEM meth injection, which is right there on both sides. Uh, it followed the recommended chart of power and, and CC nozzle size, so it's working out pretty well. And then uh, if we're looking at right here in the middle on the, on the on top of the valve covers, these are the IGN 1A uh, super smart coils or whatever they're called. They are the highest uh, output coil pack you can get, period. Um, these are rated at 81,000 peak volts. Now in comparison, like the GTR and the, I think the Titan, I think those are in the ballpark of 35,000 volts. The LS, depending on what model and whatever, whatever, those range from uh, 30 all the way up to like 50,000 volts, depending on what application you get. But 81,000 volts, that's like, you're never gonna run out of spark. And what the benefit of that is, is you got two benefits. You can not worry about spark blowout during a high boost curve, that's the obvious, but for drivability, if you, 
you have such a small uh, spark gap, you will have the possibility of a crappy uh, idle. And now in this scenario, I can run the factory gap and have enough spark to not worry about uh, spark blowout. So for low cruising, low RPM, even idling, you're gonna have the, the spark always on demand there. So just one of those things that just, when you start building a car, you gotta think about, you know, if I spend the money up front doing a nicer uh, coil pack, I can have the advantages for drivability, idling, and high boost, et cetera, et cetera. So just things to keep in mind there. Uh, we look at the, the brake booster here and the brake master. The booster is an S14, non-ABS. It's the slimmest, smallest footprint of, an, of a booster. And I had to do it to, as you can see, the, the valve covers and the heads are so wide that they were running into the factory one. There was just no way I could have the, the factory booster in here. Um, the brake master there, if you notice, the, the lines are on the opposite side. This is a GK Tech. Um, right hand drive brake master, but it's the BM57, which is Z32's largest um, bore size. That's a 17 16 So it's it's just the biggest brake master you can uh, get your hands on. And uh, you can see that I have banjo fittings there for the, the brake lines. And those are um, the 230, I'm sorry, the S13 and S14 uh, brake line relocation kit you can get from Chase Bays or Chase Boys, whatever they're called, uh, works out really well because I like the idea of having the, the brake lines away from the exhaust manifolds and the exhaust in general. So, And then this guy right here is just a vacuum storage tank. So because the, the brake booster is so small in diameter and, and, and thickness, um, you sacrifice the, the ability to hold vacuum for your brake booster. So you can add an additional storage tank. So if you look at here, you got your you got your brake booster vacuum supply line. There's your check valve and it goes into the storage tank. And then one of the outputs goes into the brake booster. And this actually feeds into the, uh, the variable valve uh, canister over there. So overall, everything, like I said, works great with brake performance. The brakes are the CTSV uh, first gen, the four pots. Um, Brembo brakes. They I did that because these are 17 inch wheels and I don't think I could put the six pot Brembos in there It's a tight fit as it is and from there I'm utilizing the 350z 13 inch rotors um, and the rears are actually uh, the GTR R34 Brembos. That's right. I had to think about that for a moment uh, utilizing a uh, 12 and a half inch rotor from an infinity. I think it's a G37 non uh, Aggie Bono brake kit. But moving down the line here, let's get back to it. That's a Mac valve for the boost controller. Um, it, all the, the boost control is done through Mega Squirt. You got an air motive fuel pressure regulator there. And the radiator setup is a Champion four core radiator that I modified to fit the application here. And yes, as many Z31 owners know, the radiator sits like at a 45 degree angle. Um, a lot of car people that don't know Z31s are like, wow, you got, why is the radiator sitting like that? Well, that's just the factory uh, placement. Um, those Mishimoto fans, I tell you what, those are 10-inch fans. They are the highest CFM pulling fan I could find, and they are loud. They pull a lot of CFM, and they do the job cooling on this car, no problems. When I'm driving the car, even on a hot summer day, the average cruising temperature that I, I normally see is like 165, 175, and that's just remarkable. When I get up on it and having some spirited fun, it gets up to about 195, maybe 200, but not for very long. It cools down pretty rapidly. And then, uh, you know, I got all the plumbing, which is a combination of, you know, silicone uh, uh, radiator lines there to stainless steel. Uh, that's actually a GTR Nismo cap that was recommended to run and going to a 2.1 liter uh, reservoir for the coolant uh, overthrow, overflow. And the reason why you want to run uh, a larger capacity um, overflow uh, reservoir is for is for two reasons. When you're when you're when you're specking out and building a custom setup like this, you have to account for the the total volume of capacity for coolant, right? So this is a large radiator, large motor. You know, it's going to hold a lot of coolant. Those you have to measure the volume, and there's like a mathematical equation that that suggests the size of overflow. So. If I was to do any smaller, I guarantee that I would have um, the overflow spitting out coolant because it'd just be too much of a of expansion there. So that size actually comes out to be the right size. I think it, the calculation was like just shy of two liters, and this being 2.1 was perfect. So 
yeah that's it for the uh big summary of the motor here and i don't know if there's anything more to cover um, i guess the only thing i failed to mention was the uh, suspension which is uh this is a stance z31 suspension um, if you notice on like the strut towers here because this car has such a wide stance i had to modify the placement for the coilovers and essentially you know you can see some welds right here where i had to move the shock tower placement as farther out as possible to gain some positive camber and even from there i modified the uh the top hat of the stance coilover to shift the uh the adjustment all the way outwards so i just threw on the uh, z31 uh strut uh caps there just to make it look cleaner so it, i think it looks great but that's it i think for the engine bay explanation from a brief overview of the whole setup I think next steps are let's get inside the car, let's get the GoPros mounted inside the cabin, let's get one mounted outside the car, and let's do a video driving experience so you guys can see or hear what it's like to be in the car and, and all the fun of driving a twin turbo VK56. So stay tuned, we'll get that going next. All right, guys, uh, hopefully you can hear me. I got microphones everywhere, got one in the engine bay, got one on me. So hopefully, with the situation, you guys can hear me talk and also hear the motor pretty good. Uh, so the car is already warmed up. I just went for around the block just to get it warmed up So we're not wasting time. Uh, I just want to show real quick my tuning solution again Mega Score 3 gold box uh, This is a Windows tablet that's running tuner studio. It's all Bluetooth wall wireless. It's all live data It's convenient having this uh, to make adjustments if I need to I also have a, an app on my phone Android to make quick adjustments But I normally just carry that because it's really easy to go so quick real quick uh, there's some switches here. So Tremec uh, recommends on the Magnum to run a cooler if you're going to put a lot of horsepower behind it. That's not required, but it has provisionings for a transmission oil cooler. So let's go ahead and turn the pump on. Differential, um, there's a cooler and pump situation for the differential. Uh, 20 clutches and a limited slip does make a lot of heat. Um, but it turns on when the temperature of the differential reaches 180 degrees. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn it on. Now when the temperature reaches that threshold, it'll kick on the pump. Um, we're on meth right now because I have pump gas in the car, uh, premium pump gas. If I'm on E85, I just turn off the switch. Uh, but yeah, let's get going. Uh, everything's already warmed up, ready to go. Got about two thirds tank of gas. It, everything's looking good. Temperature is right where it needs to be. So we're ready to roll. Um, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. We'll hit some boost curves. Uh, boost uh, and watch the uh, the boost curve hit the tires and see if the tires can hold the traction and whatnot. Um, I don't have a lot of optimism that I'll hold traction well. Like I said earlier, I don't like the tires I have. I need to get some better tires, but but for today's purpose of showing acceleration, hearing the motor, hearing the overall experience, and hopefully you guys sitting back there uh, in the cameras in the cockpit can see what I see. So let's just get to it. But 
I just hope that that doesn't mean, you know, there's police out or anything. I hope not, because I don't want to get a ticket. But again, I'm not going to do anything crazy other than just a couple of boost pulls. So we'll go ahead and do one right now. I think it's a good opportunity.
right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I'll make more. I'll make longer ones in the future. Um, today was just a good opportunity to get out there while it was warm and the sun, sun was already going down. But uh, really excited for the spring summer coming up. Um, like I said, I'll get new tires. I'm probably looking at some uh, Toyo R Triple Eight R's. They're expensive. They're like twelve, thirteen hundred bucks. But it is the right type of tire I need for the car. Um, it drives great, guys. The car is phenomenal. I just can't believe how much power this thing has. It's it's more power, and the uh, the experience is more than I expected overall. Um, a lot of people love the car. When I was just driving it earlier just now, people were waving at me, giving me thumbs up. I think it's just one of those eye-catching cars. I mean, for crying out loud, look how bright it is. It's just it's just so cool. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, more videos coming along with it. Um, next videos I need to make are of Sung's car, which is behind me, Mr. Sung King's car. Been uh, been working on it. Got the transmission pulled, but I need to get the uh, motor pulled out next. It's just been kind of unmotivating with the colder weather lately. But it's warmer, like I said, and uh, maybe today or tomorrow I'll get working on it and get some more videos going for that car. But all right, guys. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and please. Uh, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Comments if you have any uh, things that you saw that were cool, any suggestions about how to keep tires from uh, breaking loose other than just not hitting boost. But uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Talk to you later.